Testicles, testicles, one, two, three, testing. Welcome to another episode of Street Photographer Dublin. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about my times as an Irish celebrity photographer. Not a paparazzi, but a celebrity photographer. There is a difference, and I'm going to tell you a few stories. So, welcome to the episode. And before we start, I would just like to thank my new subscribers, who are all listed across the screen now. Thank you very much for your continued support. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. So, how do you get into photography for showbiz parties and events? Um, well, like most people watching this, I hadn't a clue. I hadn't a clue at all. But I knew one night that there was a Hot Fuzz premiere with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost on at the Virgin Cinemas in Dublin, down on Parnell Street. And I'd said to a friend of mine, Tim, who is a photographer from the UK, um, we should head down there and check it out, you know, see if we can get some nice pictures. We're both into photography. He was shooting a Canon EOS 5D at the time. And from memory, I think I was using a Nikon D200. Or possibly D300. Anyhow, long story short, we went down to the event. We're down at the cinemas. We're walking around with our cameras hung around our chest. And uh, a PR person came over and said, are you the photographer for the premiere? And before I could say anything, Tim immediately goes, yeah, yeah, we're, we're the, the photographers for the event. So she goes, oh, come on upstairs. We thought no one was coming because the Meteor Music Awards is on, which was down in the Point Depot at the time. And it uh, turns out all the press had gone down there. So these two lads turned up, Nick and Simon, for their premiere. But there's no photographers around, literally just myself and Tim. So she said, come, come on upstairs. And she said, go into the bar there, help yourselves. Unlimited drinks, unlimited food. And we'll get the lads ready and we'll give you a shout. Giggity, 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 go. So lo and behold, the two lads come out. They stand there posing for a few pictures. It's myself and Tim. Very civilized. Well, civilized by what became the norm later on but you know fairly fairly civilized and we got a few shots posed for a few pictures with the lads and the pure person came over after and said you know who are you sending them to who are you going to send the pictures to <laughs> i had no idea and tim just goes yeah just some of the different newspapers etc and she said well can you send copies on to when which is world entertainment news network in london and um, you know they'll get them distributed. So we did that. We contacted Wen, sent the images on. They said, "Listen, we don't currently have freelancers working in Dublin for us. Would you like to be freelance photographers for ourselves?" And uh, we both jumped at the chance. So after that, we just got put down on guest lists. Um, you know, press passes going to various movie premieres and showbiz events, and. Uh, yeah, I did that for a couple of years. Very good. Um, but that's that's how it started. So on with a few stories. So the biggest event on the Irish celebrity calendar each year was the IFTAS, Irish Film and Television Awards. And myself and Tim went down to that. The first one we went to was at the RDS, um, RDS Simmons Court. And then there was other ones at the Burlington Hotel. Met various celebrities over the, the years, you know. It's funny because some some celebrities that you read about in the news who are terrible are actually nice people in person when you meet them, they're very nice people. And other ones who are supposed to be quiet, um, you know, are actually terrible people. <laughs> so, you know, it really depends. Like a uh, brief example, Bono, um, he went to the International Jameson International Film Festival at the Ambassador Theatre, and he was there on behalf of his friend Ed Burns. And I was standing out there with other photographers and there was a girl in a wheelchair, maybe an hour, and it was like pissing rain. And for those watching outside Ireland, pissing is an expression for just heavy, heavy downpour. And she was sitting there in the wheel wheelchair waiting to get a CD signed. And Bono just walked past and said, sorry, I'm not here in the capacity of you two tonight. I'm here to support my friend. Fair enough. But you think you would have signed a CD for? After that point, I just, I lost all respect for, for him as an individual and you two as a fan. I was just like, God, everyone's right. He is a knob end, you know. And if you're watching this, Bono, I will say that to your face. You're a bit of a bell end. 
so afterwards, Ed Burns comes out. Now, in fairness, I didn't really know who he was, but all the other press photographers there were taking pictures. And he goes, Jesus Christ, if I have to watch my film one more time, I'll kill myself. Because obviously he's doing all these premieres and he's going to sit there and do questions and answers. So he goes, is there a fish and chip place nearby? And he said, yeah, there's one just across the street there, Parnell Street. So he goes and says, do any of you lads want to come over and get a bite to eat? My treat. So off we go and have fish and chips with Ed Burns. Great. You know, it was unusual. But there you go. I just remember, though, when all the different celebrities are turning up at this event, though. The thing I didn't like is I'm I'm quite I'm quite a quiet person. You know, I'm a bit timid. So this was still very new to me. So I didn't like the way they're all shouting, Here, here, such and such, Jim Bob, Square Bob, Sponge Pants, whatever, Pajama Pants, I don't give a shit. They're all shouting at them, you know, get, trying to get their pictures, trying to get their attention. And I get it later on because when you take all these photographs, unless the celebrity's looking directly at your camera, the pictures aren't worth shit. The papers and press aren't going to buy them. You know, but I I just felt weird shouting at people. So it was a bit intimidating at the start. But, you know, you get used to it over time. Eventually, you know, I learned to have a gimmick. I'd wear like a, a funny hat, like a, a Viking helmet. And that will get the individual's attention. They'd look at you. Because I see the helmet, that's when I snap my picture, you know. So that worked. Yeah, so I was at the Irish Film and Television Awards. There was quite a few celebrities. Sometimes they have a few Americans over, you know, some of the big Hollywood guys, not just the local homegrown celebrities. And Josh Hartnett was there. Now, he was in Pearl Harbor at the time, you know, himself. And I think it was Ben Affleck. In fairness, it's such a long time ago, I don't remember, but... I photographed Josh Hartnett. He's the one on the screen you're going to be looking at now. Um, he was very quiet. Very quiet. Uh, I wasn't impressed with him at all. He just seemed to be bored out of his tree, in fairness. He just felt like, you know, he looked like he'd just rather be somewhere else. You know, watching paint dry. You know, or, or screwing a prostitute or something. I don't know, but he just didn't look happy at all, you know. So uh, that's what happens sometimes. They won't crack a smile. Sometimes you need to get their attention, make them smile, make them laugh. You get a better picture. There was another time at the RDS where I met Joe. Um, God, what's Joe Mac? I can't remember his surname. He's on my Instagram anyway, um, which is Street Photographer Dublin. But uh, myself and him were chatting away. We're two guys. All the other press guys there were just the main, the main clique, the main group from the different celebrity events all the time they know each other very well they won't talk to the new guys you know so myself and joe were there and various irish celebrities were coming along Um lara flynn boyle who was in men in black at the time came along in kind of like a sea crew top um which all the guys had mental for taking the pictures but as you see from the picture she's there she just got married and her new husband is standing beside her and no one knows who this guy is He's just standing there and he's getting no attention at all. Um, you just see he's standing there again, just doing his duty as a good husband, boyfriend, whatever. You know, he's like, yeah, just stand here and support you while you do your thing. Yada, yada, yada. You know, a lot of times uh, it can be quite boring. You can be standing there for hours, you know, and nothing happens. Um, and it's amazing how something as simple as somebody tripping, all of a sudden like, chuk, 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 chuk. it's like bedlam. You're like, I see people fall on the street all the time. I don't fucking take a picture of them, you know. But that's the way it is at showbiz parties. They're like, ooh, such and such celebrity fell. You know, big deal. There's more interesting stuff in the news than that. It's not a, you know, a newsworthy thing. But that's what happens. Before I forget, I need to tell you about this one. Um, an Irish TV station called TV Tree were having a launch party for their new celebrity showbiz show that used to be on three times a week at six o'clock for I think for half an hour and um, it was called expose and they had a big party on at the mansion house was it no sorry not the mansion house city hall in Dublin just on North Dame Street onto Parliament Street and um, I remember you know it was just some Irish celebrities there's no real big shots at this particular event but uh, Louis Walsh had flown in from London for the event and um, he was there and I was chatting away with him and this was still early on for me doing the celebrity stuff so I was like oh this is great fun you know I said uh, Louie Louie is there any chance you can call my friend Anthony and just wind him up tell him you want him on the, the X Factor you know so he goes yeah yeah no problem so uh, I get on the, the phone ring Anthony up 
And they go, hey, Anthony, I've got Louis Walsh here. He wants to talk to you for a minute. And Anthony's like, ah, yeah, whatever, whatever, you know. He didn't realise it was at this party that night. And Louis starts going, how are you, Anthony? How are things? Very good. Uh, I believe you're a great singer. I want you to come on X Factor. And next minute, uh, Louis Walsh just looks disgusted. He hands the phone back to me. I said, what happened? He says, he told me to fuck off. <laughs> I was like, what? So I got on the phone to Anthony. He said, Anthony, what are you telling me to fuck off for? He goes, oh, that's just you messing. You got some random lad doing an impression. I said, no, that's the real Louis Walsh. He goes, ah, no, it wasn't. It was not. I said, it was. I Look, I tell you what. I have a picture of him. I'm here to the showbiz party. It's him. <sighs> you know, some things happen like that. There was another time, actually, uh, Puff Daddy was playing. Sorry. Yeah, Puff Daddy came to visit Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was playing in the the point depot at the time here in dublin and they were having an after party in i think it was was it called system it was a bar nightclub in mid uh, upper abbey street um at the time but uh so all of the press are waiting outside this big black uh suv type thing pulls up all the press go crazy door opens drives off there's no one there you know it's just did that a couple of times to throw off the scent so it got to a particular point um, that every time one came over, some guys would get ready, but then they're like, ah, they're just, you know, it's no one important yet. So eventually, a uh, blacked out people carrier turns up and Puff Daddy, I call him Puff Daddy because he goes by the name P. Diddy, but in Ireland, Diddy is slang for a boob. It's a tit. And, you know, these days he is a bit of a tit anyway. But uh, yeah, so he's getting out. And my friend Colin was with me and, you know, Colin was a bit happy at this point because we'd been standing there for a while, you know, waiting. I mean, we could have had a couple of drinks at the bar instead, you know, which in fairness was more fun. But I was like, Jesus, Colin, you know, how am I going to get his attention? I need to get him looking straight at the camera for the photograph, otherwise it's useless to me. So Colin just stood on one leg and started hopping up and down. And he's a big dude, you know, he's like me. He goes, look at me, Diddy, look at me. I'm a big gay Irish fairy. And did he look at me? You know, thank you. Got the shot. You know, so I was absolutely delighted with that. Good fun. Oh my god, there were some great times. You know, I met various people: Angelina Jolie, Colin Farrell, you two, uh, John Voight, um, Emilia Westerves, Martin Sheen. You know, some good times. But uh, it's it's a tough game. You send all your photographs in. You actually end up spending money going to these events. Then you're hanging around and you're buying food. Sometimes food's provided to showbiz parties, etc. But in general, when you're just being told, look, there's a party on here tonight. Go down and see if you get some shots. Uh, you're buying your own food. You're buying your own drinks. But it got to a point where I gave up trying to, you know, get all the shots for the newspaper and all this stuff. I just ended up going, you know what? I'm going there for me to have fun. I'm going to meet such and such a celebrity that I like. I'm going to take some pictures, hang out with them. Um, you know, it's very good. Oh, which brings me on to the next picture. Uh, big fan of the Goo Goo Dolls. And I'd seen them playing the Olympia in Dublin. And then uh, through my contacts when they played the Ambassador Theatre, I got to meet them and hang out with them, as you'll see from this picture. And then through a friend of mine, we found out which hotel they were staying at in Dublin. Um, I won't divulge it because apparently they stay there all the time. But uh, so we went up after and we're sitting in the, the bar because we knew somebody was staying there. So we were able to go into the residence bar. Otherwise, you wouldn't be allowed in, you know. And sure enough, after the gig, the Goo Goo Dolls came back and uh, Mike, John and Robbie were there and uh, Brad and I got to talk to uh, Mike Malnan, who was the drummer, and Brad, who was uh, one of their support guitarists. So, you know, it has its ups, upsides and downsides. Now, let me get on to the money part quickly. You don't make much money. When you sign up for this celebrity photography stuff, basically the agencies do 50-50 or 40-60. They take 40%, you get 60 or 50-50. Now... Sometimes you might sell a particular image, you will get some money, you know, twenty, thirty dollars for an image or sterling, depending what way it goes. But other times they would sell images for a website and you get like five cent, which is ridiculous, you know. Uh it gets to a point as well where 
they would have to let money build up to a certain amount, say like fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars before they pay out. So sometimes it could be a while waiting on money till you build up sales. But is it worth it? Um, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, back when I started, I had only a Nikon D70, which was a six megapixel camera. But as told, they need a minimum of 10 megapixels for the images. So as lucky, my mother supported me at the time and loaned me the money pretty much the same night. I told her I can get this job doing freelance if I get this camera. So she she gave me the money at the time. I think it was about thousand euro and I got a Nikon D200 which was an acceptable camera uh, megapixel range at the time uh, so yeah you can get into it you can have a you can have a bit of fun but you know I just thought I'd share my little story um, yeah I don't know you might find this interesting if not again let me know if you have any celebrity stories just let me know it's interesting to hear these things I will be back soon with another episode of Street Photography. Um, I'm going to try to get a bit more decent footage of me actually going through, taking the images, explaining what I'm doing. It's been a bit hard lately. Last time I was in the city centre, there wasn't much going on. Lousy weather and wind. Um, and coming up, I'll have some street photography from Lanzarote and some landscape photography. And before the year's out, Iceland. So keep on watching. Subscribe, like the videos, it helps me out and see you next time.